This is our league, and this is your league. From the 55-yard line on CFL America Radio and the Sports History Network. Myth, offense, defense, toughness, coaching expertise. Edmonton had it all during a five-year period when they ruled the CFL. The ultimate football dynasty. What better place to relive the grand accomplishments of the 1978 to 82 Edmonton Eskimos than here at the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. An unprecedented five Grey Cup titles for the green and gold, and to think the roots of this dynasty grew from one of the most lopsided losses in Grey Cup history, the 41-6 defeat to rival Montreal in 1977. Hall of Famers Pinnell, Kepley, Wilkinson, Moon, and Cutler, and a glittering supporting cast would respond to that defeat and forge a legacy of domination. Another prime catalyst was Coach Hugh Campbell, also enshrined here at the Hall of Fame. He surrounded himself with an innovative coaching staff, including Cal Murphy and Don Matthews. The Eskimos seek revenge and redemption as they began to write one of the great chapters in CFL history taking to the field at Exhibition Stadium in Toronto for the 1978 Grey Cup game. That revenge would entertain a sellout throng at Exhibition Stadium. It is second and eight, Edmonton at the Montreal 27-yard line. The offenses struggled early in the 78 championship game. Edmonton's Tom Wilkinson under pressure. Lateral to Jim Germany, who couldn't hang on. And Chuck Zapak pounced for the Alouettes. Montreal returned the favor. When Edmonton's Greg Butler strips the ball away from David Green. And Dr. Death Dave Pinnell was there to gain control. Leading 3-0, Dave Cutler lined up for a field goal. But instead, Wilkinson flipped the ball to Tom Scott, who ran for a first down on a nicely executed fake. Two plays later, Jim Germany cashed in from two yards out as the Eskimos built their lead to 10-0 and 14-3 at halftime. It's 17-3 late in the third quarter when Germany lost the handle and Gore Judges recovers for the Alouettes on the Edmonton 10. Joe Barnes calls his own number and with some help from Pat Bonnet gets into the end zone, reducing the Edmonton lead to just seven points. Within four, with two minutes left, Sonny Wade tries for Bob Gaddis, but Larry Highbaugh knocks the ball away. Less than a minute remaining. Dave Cutler is good from 25 yards out to make the score Edmonton 20, Montreal 13. The Eskimos have their revenge. The Grey Cup is heading west to Edmonton. For a third year in a row, Edmonton and Montreal met in the Grey Cup game before 65,000 at the Big O. The crafty Tom Wilkinson started for the Esks and made the Alouettes pay when he avoids the rush and found a wide open Waddell Smith for a 43-yard score. It looked easy, but it was the only touchdown of the half. Wide open, it was ridiculous. Montreal was limited to a pair of Don Sweet field goals, and league MVP David Green was shut down here by Tom Towns. The Eskimos hounded the Alouettes' Joe Barnes all day. Dale Potter providing the sack on this occasion. But Montreal was just as stingy. What looked like a Wilkinson completion here is stolen away from Brian Kelly by high-priced linebacker Tom Cousineau. After much discussion, the turnover stood. So too did the animosity between the two clubs. This Grey Cup rubber match had turned into a nasty war. Oh, uh, nice thing being said, I'll rig the bloody grudge match, I'll tell you right now. The Eskimos brought more pressure against Barnes. Dan Kepley with the shoestring tackle for the sack. But the Alouettes hang on, trailing by just one point. For that Edmonton defensive unit in this first half. 
Don Sweet gave Montreal its first lead with his third field goal midway into the third quarter. Edmonton's Hugh Campbell then decides to make a change. Warren Moon enters at quarterback to hit Tom Scott for a 33-yard score. Wide open, touchdown! Edmonton on top again and builds the lead to 17-9 on a Cutler field goal. The critical play comes with two minutes remaining. Montreal's Keith Baker fielded a punt and suddenly finds a wide open field full of opportunity. Keith Baker! Baker would take the ball 85 yards to the Edmonton end zone, but a penalty flag was on the Olympic Stadium carpet. The apparent touchdown was being wiped out on a clipping call against Jerry Dottilio, much to coach Joe Scanella's displeasure. Dottilio for clipping, nullifying the touchdown. The last gasp for the Alouettes ends when Dickie Harris is tackled on this kick return. He's all wrapped up and so Hugh Campbell and the Eskimos celebrate their second straight Great Cup triumph over the Alouettes. Edmonton becomes the first back-to-back -back winner since Ottawa in 68 and 69. So let's play football. 1980 in Toronto, the Hamilton Tiger Cats day was foreshadowed on the opening kickoff, fumbled by Obi Graves. Leading 3-0, the Eskimos marched 94 yards for another score. The big play, this completion to Danny Jitterbugs, good for 55 yards. Jim Germany will crash over for the touchdown as Edmonton built a 10-0 lead in the first quarter. A pair of Bernie Ruoff Hamilton field goals cut into that lead, but the Eskimos responded quickly. Warren Moon took the Eskimos on another long drive and he was a major factor in the ground attack. It set up another Germany plunge to build Edmonton's lead to 17-6, with just over four minutes remaining in the half. A Joe Holloman interception gave the ball back to Edmonton, and Moon delivered the backbreaker into the hands of Brian Kelly. Kelly put the Eskimos up 24-6 as he eludes the defense and gets the ball into the end zone. We've never run before. I just asked Warren to throw me a pass. You know, I'm getting kind of tired. not getting any better. Edmonton's defense sparkled to start the second half. Dale Potter, outstanding all day, knocked down a pass. The linebackers took over. Tom Towns stripping the ball loose for this turnover. And middle linebacker Danny Kepley stifled the Ticats attack with a sack. Edmonton pulled a fake punt early in the third quarter as Neil Lumsden rambled for a 48-yard gain. That set up a 19-yard touchdown catch by Tom Scott as Hamilton played into the Eskimos' hands. Touchdown, Edmonton! You know when they got behind, they start blitzing a lot of people, and one-on-one, uh, -on -one, we just don't feel they can cover our receivers. And if, we, if our linemen are picking up the blitz like they are, it makes it pretty easy for me to hit our receivers because they're open. Tom Wilkinson came into the game with the Eskimos up 41 to 10. He found Scott once more for Scott's Great Cup record third touchdown reception. There wasn't any doubt about Edmonton's third consecutive Great Cup triumph. When impatient fans stormed the field, the game was called with four seconds left. Edmonton Eskimos, the dynasty years on Sports Saturday will continue after a timeout for these commercial messages. Olympic Stadium hosted Edmonton and the Ottawa Rough Riders. The Riders, just 5 and 11 during the regular season, 22 point underdogs to the mighty Eskimos. No one figured they had a chance. Except Ottawa quarterback J.C. Watts, who called on Tony Gabriel to drive deep into Edmonton territory, setting up an early Jerry Organ field goal. The Riders also showed signs that Warren Moon and the high-powered Edmonton offense wasn't going to have an easy time. Moon was also hurried, creating mistakes. Rick Sovieta with the pick. The Edmonton offensive brain trust realized changes were needed to contend with the Riders. 
Up by 13, Sam Platt's churning run results in another Ottawa score. And a stunning 20 to nothing Rough Rider lead. The question has to be asked, who are the guys in the white sweaters? You know, J.C., can, uh, he's a good rollout quarterback, and he's uh, rolling out sometimes, and, uh, you know, he can run the ball pretty well, you know, so with him being such a good quarterback, anything can happen. Late in the first half, the Eskimos sent in Tom Wilkinson, who connected with Neil Lumsden for a nice gain to the Ottawa 26. When the drive stalled, the usually reliable Dave Cutler missed from 24 yards out. It was Ottawa 20, Edmondson 1 at halftime. In the third quarter, the defense got the Eskimos on track. They came out hitting. Dan Kepley rocked flat to set the tempo for the second half. Then James Quick Parker sacked Watts, and Dale Potter made the recovery. Ottawa's George Brancato could sense the momentum shifting. We're trying to overcome our mistakes and play as a team. Maybe we came out a little bit too much individually minded. Now you're going to see us gel as a team. Warren Moon led the Eskimos to a pair of third quarter touchdowns, cutting the lead to eight before Lumsden took off on a fourth quarter scamper towards the Ottawa end zone. Lumsden came up just short, but the Eskimos were knocking on the door. A Moon sneak made the score Ottawa 23, Edmondson 21. On the two point convert, Moon escaped to find Marco Sincar, and the game was tied. Edmondson had come all the way back. I think the momentum's coming our way, and I just hope that we can pull this thing out. Second and San Ottawa. With under two minutes to go, Watts connects on a big completion to Tony Gabriel in front of defender Gary Hayes. But a controversial double pass interference call negates the play. The rare decision stalls Ottawa's final drive. And I'll tell you what, I don't think I'd call it either way because they were both going after the football. It's a ruling that would be debated for years to come. Taking over on the Ottawa 50, the Eskimos move the ball on the ground and in the scoring position. Now, do you go for the three-pointer or do you kick it out of the end zone? Dave Cutler was sent out to win the game with a 27-yard field goal. This time, Cutler made no mistake. Edmonton 26, Ottawa 23, as the Eskimos survived a near disastrous first half to rebound for their fourth consecutive Grey Cup title, a feat never accomplished before. Exhibition Stadium was cold, wet, and windy for the 1982 Grey Cup. Hugh Campbell's last as a coach in the CFL. After falling to last place by Labor Day, the Eskimos went on a roll, winning nine straight before meeting the Argos. Toronto was led by MVP Conrad Holloway. Down by three, Holloway would hook up with Emmanuel Tolbert. And the speedy receiver turned it into an 84-yard touchdown. It was the start of a wide open back and forth exchange by the two clubs in the first half. Just 14 seconds into the second quarter, the Eskimos regained the lead. Warren Moon to Brian Kelly. The Argos immediately answered. Holloway getting the ball to Terry Greer. Argos now up 14 to 10. Well, right now, guys up front in the linebackers, we're just not going where we're supposed to be going. And, uh, when you give Holloway time, he'll kill any defensive back in the league. Midway in the second quarter, Edmondson's offense has its turn again. Moon to Kelly, this time for 41 yards. And the Eskimos were on top once more, 17-14. A driving rainstorm throughout the second half curtailed the team's offenses. Late in a scoreless third quarter, the Argos looked to have a long gain on a Cedric Mitter reception. But Edmonton's Gary Hayes strips the ball, and Dan Kepley recovered and brought it back to the Argos 34. Much to the chagrin of Bob Obilovich, the Argos head coach. Kepley came up with the football, and the Argos are protesting. Nine plays later on a third down gamble, Lumsden hit and spins for the back-breaking score. Edmonton was up 26 to 14 with just over a quarter left. The Edmonton defense.
defense then seals the victory. Well, we weren't getting enough pressure on him in the first half, and we straightened that out at, at the half, and now we're getting a little more pressure containing Holloway. That's the key, I think. The Eskimo. Holloway wasn't getting any time to find his receivers as the relentless Eskimo pressure gets to him again. Dave Cutler would add the finishing touches for the Edmonton dynasty with his fourth field goal. It gave Cutler a great cup record, 18 career field goals, and assured Coach Hugh Campbell's squad of an unprecedented fifth CFL championship, this time over the Argos. I accept this great cup on behalf of God, my teammates, and Eskimo fans everywhere. In the 82 season, the Eskimos won their final 10 games to go from last to the top once again. During their five-year reign, they defeated each of the four Eastern teams at least once in a Grey Cup championship. Their logo, the double E, it could stand for Era of Excellence, an era the likes of which we may never see again in Canadian football. Thank you, Chris. Live at Commonwealth Stadium, not only a great organization on the field, off the field, the one organization that hasn't been whining and complaining over the last 20 years. Up next, we'll take...